Welcome to Rocky Mountain RV. It's a beautiful September afternoon here in southwest Montana and today I'd like to take a few minutes and walk you through how to winterize your Dutchman travel trailer. For my video today I'm going to be using a Dutchman 257 RBGS light travel trailer. This is a 2011 model and we'll use it for our little learning tool today. So the first thing we want to do when we're getting ready to winterize is step inside the coach and check to be sure that our water heater switch as well as our pump switch are both in the off position which you can see right here that both switches are in the off position. From there we're going to step back outside of the coach and we're going to go ahead and drain our fresh water tank and our water heater tank. Now on the 257 Dutchman the water heater drain is right, excuse me, the water fresh water tank drain is right here on the underside of the coach. And you can see it as a single line that hangs down through the underbelly with just a little white cap on it. So we'll just reach over and unthread this cap. And this is just going to allow our fresh water tank to go ahead and drain out. And that way it'll be empty and ready for, for storage for the winter. Back here at the back of the 257, we have our water heater access door, which will open up right here. And Dutchman does use the Atwood water heater, so you'll see the little white plug right down there at the bottom. And I have pre-loosened this. It does take a 15 16 inch socket with a half inch drive ratchet to loosen this guy up. So we'll go ahead and just loosen this plug up. Now you can see that we have a little bit of pressure on there. And it's going to pop out like that and just go right ahead and drain out. And I usually just store my little caps right here inside the water heater door. And that way we know exactly where they're at. Next spring we're ready to go, go back to using the coach. Now some people want to open up the pop-off valve here to help the water heater drain faster. You do not need to do that. And honestly, it is gonna, gonna cause that pop-off valve to leak if you do open it up. So just go ahead and let it, let it dribble out of there just like that. We can go ahead and close our water heater door and that will continue to drain. On the inside of the coach, we'll go in and find our water heater bypass, which we know our water heater is in the rear corner of this particular model. And I have pulled out the drawers here in the bathroom area to allow me access down here into the back of the water heater. And the water heater placement trailer to trailer will be different, so just go ahead and find it on the outside, correlate that to the inside area, and then go ahead and find your access. This model we had to pull a couple of drawers out. Some models they have a little a little panel that pulls off with a few screws. Let me get my camera down in here so we can get a a good view of what we're looking at. You can see that the back of the water heater here has three valves on it. One at the top, one down here at the bottom, and then one on our center bypass hose. And this, the, the valves on there, the handles are going to indicate the, the direction of flow of the water. So you can see that right now we are in the normal use position. Our water comes in the bottom hose, it comes up through our tank and out the top hose here. And then on out to our system. The center bypass, of course, we want to have that turned off when we're in normal use so the water does not shortcut the water tank. So for our bypass, we don't want to fill our whole water heater full of antifreeze, so we're just going to shut that valve off. That's going to not allow any water into the bottom of the tank. Up here at the top, we're going to close that valve as well. These are just a quarter turn valve. That's as far as they'll turn, stopping the water going into the top of the tank. In here in the middle, we will open our bypass valve, and that's going to allow the, the, the antifreeze to just shortcut the tank so we're not filling the water heater full of antifreeze. Of course, we're draining that out on the outside there. And most Dutchman products are equipped with the water heater bypass, so that will be very simple. If your trailer is not equipped with the water heater bypass, you may want to bring it in to a service center uh, and have it professionally winterized. 
The next thing that we're going to look at here is the tools required to do our winterize. Now, of course, like I said, outside on the water heater, it did require this 15 16 inch socket and half inch drive ratchet to pull that plug out on the bottom. We also need a little screw gun here with a number two square drive bit to gain access to our either our water pump or our water heater depending on the on the model. We'll also need two gallons of RV non-toxic antifreeze and you can see here that these are good for 50 below weather and you want to make sure that you do use RV antifreeze and not car antifreeze because RV antifreeze is designed for freshwater drinking systems it is non-toxic where where it, it is not a, a good thing to to of course drink car antifreeze so uh, our other our other little piece of equipment we need here is called a siphon hose and this particular model is going to use just a straight siphon hose down here to hook up to the pump and pump out into our pump out of our, our jugs of antifreeze into our system. Now on the 257, the water pump is located underneath this dinette seat. Now that's the other big thing that you have to find in your unit when you are winterizing is to locate the water pump. A lot of times the best thing is before you start, go ahead and turn your water pump switch on and you can, you can see, or, or excuse me, hear where your water pump is going to be located. And again, the RV companies will always give you access. Sometimes it's, it's not the greatest access, but they do always give you access in there. You can see that this little board here removes, pulls up and out of the way. Now our water heater is actually, or excuse me, our water pump is actually down here below this, this little cover here. And I've already pulled the screws out. You can see it had a screw here and a screw over in this corner just to make this a little easier while I'm doing the video. So right here's our water pump. You can see that on most water pump systems, you're gonna have a filter on it, and that's this little piece right here. And that will be on our suction or our inlet side. Uh, if you do not have a filter, another easy way is just to look at the head of the water pump and it will have a flow direction arrow on it. So we'll go ahead and just loosen this guy up. And again, we're taking this off the suction side or the side that comes from the freshwater tank. Pop that off, get it out of the way. This little water filter here, we should go ahead and take this guy out of the way as well and make sure that we get all the water out of it. And this little cap will come off the top right here. And of course there's our screen. Make sure we've got all of our water pulled out. Now when you put these caps on, you always wanna check them for cracks make sure that they are good and tight because next spring when you go back to using your system you don't want your water pump to be pulling air here or it will never pull any water out of your fresh water tank okay from here we're going to go ahead and thread our siphon hose onto the suction side of the pump which we were just working with here and again this is a 2011 model dutchman some of our 2011s and prior model years did use a flow jet pump, which used a little bit different type of fitting to thread onto the water pump here. And I'll show you that fitting here in just a second. And if you do have a flow jet pump, of course, this is a, an Artist Products pump here. Uh, and you can see that right on the top. Um, like I say, if you do have a flow jet pump, oftentimes we do need to go ahead and get a separate fitting that just clips in. They don't have these threaded fittings like this. All right, and that feels to me like it's gonna be plenty tight to make a seal. And this is that other little fitting I was talking about right here. And this just clips right, you push it right into the pump and it clips in. So if you do have a flow jet pump, you will require this fitting. From here, we simply just grab our jug of antifreeze, set it down in with the pump here. We'll go ahead and slide our siphon hose right down into it and I like to have this as gentle of bend as I can possibly get with my hose all the way at the bottom of the jug there. So when we turn that pump on it'll go right ahead and suck that, that antifreeze out and into the system. At this point we're ready to go ahead and, and winterize our trailer, run our antifreeze through our system. So we'll go over to the water pump switch which on the 257 is right here in this little panel. You kick that on, of course you hear the water pump start pumping. We'll see that it's gonna run antifreeze right in. It's gonna suck down about a quarter of a gallon and the pump should shut off. 
From this point, we want to do each faucet individually. And, I, and when I say that, I mean each handle. So on this one, I'm going to start with the hot water side. I'm going to open that up. We're going to see clear water running out. And RV antifreeze is a pusher, so it's going to push all the water out. And then right about here, we're going to see the pink antifreeze start coming out. And that way, we know that we've got antifreeze into that system, so we're looking good there. Now we're going to shut that side off. We're going to come over here to the cold water side and start with it. Now we're going to start with pink. It will go right back to clear, and then we'll have pink again in just a minute. And there it is. You can see that coming out pink. So now we've got all that water pushed out of that system, and of course antifreeze run all the way into our coach. And I always kind of just keep an eye on my antifreeze jug here. Looks like we're doing okay so far. Uh, we will need to switch jugs at some point. So let's go ahead and go into the bathroom. And we'll start with the bathroom faucet again with the hot side. And we'll watch that guy. That's nice clear water coming out. And there's our pink antifreeze. Move over to the cold water side. And again, you can see that clear water. And there's our pink antifreeze. We move to the bathtub. Nice and pink right away. And over on the cold side, nice and pink right away. At this point, I'll go ahead and run some through my shower hose as well. And you'll see all that water push out of there, and there's a nice pink antifreeze. From that point with my shower hose, I always like to put my hose back up, put it back in the holder up here, and then I will disconnect it from the actual faucet and just let that hose hang like that all winter. That way anything is going to flow all the way down and out of the out of the hose, no problems at all. We'll step over here to the toilet and it's the same process. We'll just step on our foot pedal. Again, see that pink right away. Okay, and now I can hear that my water pump is running free, so of course we're going to need to change our antifreeze jug. So we'll come right back over here. We'll grab our second gallon of antifreeze and just switch this guy right over from one jug right over and into the other and a lot of times this isn't going to take off until we actually open a faucet and relieve the airlock that the pump makes so just get this guy set back in there where it belongs and we'll come back over to our kitchen faucet Give it just a second, we'll watch that antifreeze come right back through there and into the pump. And there the pump shut off again. From here we want to go to the outside of the coach. We've got everything covered on the inside, so the kitchen sink, the bathroom sink, the tub, as well as our toilet. From here we'll go outside. The 2011 Dutchman 257 is equipped with an outside spray port. Many RVs are going to have an outside shower with both hot and cold. This particular coach has the coil cold, excuse me, coil cord with just one hose and just, of course, cold water. But the same thing out here, we'll go ahead and just run this through until we see our nice pink antifreeze, and there we go. All right, at that point, we have antifreeze run through the entire system on the coach. So we'll go ahead back inside here. We will shut off, excuse me, we'll shut off our water heater switch, or excuse me, our water pump switch. And then we'll go ahead and relieve the pressure off the system. Down just like that, and both sides so the system is relieved. Now the last thing that we have to get antifreeze to run through is going to be on the outside and it's our city water connection. And this is always going to be on the off door side, so over here on the, on the left hand side or the driver's side of the coach. Pull that little cap open and you'll see that we have a little screen in here. Just pop that guy right out of there. And then we can go ahead and push that little button right in the center with your finger and you'll see the water and a little bit of antifreeze come out. And once we see that, we've got that guy protected so it's not going to freeze up when it comes cold. All right, from this point here, we can go ahead and open our low point drains and this is just going to allow any of the excess 
water and antifreeze that's left in the lines to come right out. Now on the 257 here, hard to get an angle, but they are right here behind the spring hanger. So we'll just take and pull this little cap out. Let that one drain out. There are two lines for both hot and cold water sides for low point drains. And you'll see both those lines drain right out. And you'll recognize those by two lines hanging down through the belly pan and those two lines will be right together. Again, I take my two little plugs, we're gonna put them right here with the rest of our plugs so we don't lose those. All right, the last little step winterizing your water system is just to go ahead and wipe up any of the excess antifreeze that's left in your sinks and that way you won't get any stains or have any problems when you're ready to go next spring everything will be ready to go and looking sharp so we just give those a quick wipe down it always seems like the shower is the one that takes the most cleaning up but not a big deal Again, just wipe up any of that excess so that pink antifreeze doesn't give us any stains come next spring. And the toilet, same idea. Go ahead and step on it and wipe everything down here. Alright, and that covers our pressure side of our fresh system. From this point, we'll just go right ahead. I usually just go ahead and hit the pump with the hose pulled out of the jug. And that's going to just suck any of the excess antifreeze out of that line and have it right out of our way here. So we can go ahead and disconnect our siphon hose get it out of our way and then hook back up our fresh water tank pickup hose and you notice you don't need a lot of tools for this everything here basically just wants to be hand tight make sure everything's looking good and that's how it should look again We'll take just a little bit of our leftover antifreeze out of our jug here, and we just want to make sure that we're protecting our traps. So we dump about a half a cup down each drain, and then I'll have to come back and wipe up the excess because it seems like, like I always spill a little bit doing this. And like I said, this is just going to help protect our pea traps because they do have standing water in them. About a half a cup per per pea trap without any troubles. And at that point we have our water system winterized. Now winterizing doesn't stop with just the water system. Your RV also requires that you do remove your batteries up here at the front of the coach. This one I just have a single battery on, but most coaches do have two. So remove those and just uh, go ahead and put them in storage. We prefer to see that you're putting them in a dry, warm, consistent temperature place, a garage, a basement, something like that. Uh, when you get the, bat get the unit ready to go for the spring, we'll go ahead and get those batteries charged up, then put them back on the coach. And that's just going to prevent any, any type of freezing. Uh, the tires as well do a lot better in the winter time. If we do get them up off the ground, we can go ahead and back these tires up on some chalk blocks and just keep them from sitting on the dirt like we're seeing here. And that's gonna help a lot with the, with the tire life. Uh, our parts department here at Rocky Mountain RV also offers tire covers, custom fit tire covers for your coach, and that will make a big difference on keeping the sun off of the tires. So we can go ahead and get those those uh, tire covers put on. We also offer a cover for your air conditioning unit which is mounted of course up here on the top of the coach right up there and that will ke help keep it from getting weather checked also. So all those parts and, and accessories as well as a siphon hose anything you might need to winterize is available here through our parts department at Rocky Mountain RV. And we can just give them a call at 1-800-822-1114 and they can get you taken care of on anything you might need. So that's how to winterize your Dutchman RV. 
And if you don't have a Dutchman RV, but you'd like to do a do-it-yourself winterize, most RVs on the market use the same basic fundamental steps I just went through there. So this is Nathan Hubbard for Rocky Mountain RV. You guys have a great day. Thanks.